All right, so I copied it onto here and then I erased all of that background. And by doing that, by just deleting it, if I turn on the white behind, I can judge that action on its own. And that action looked really cool with the black background, but compared to my exposure before, it really brightens it too much. And it, it really burns it out so that even the edge of my photo turns white there. So how much do I want? Well, I can play with the opacity, but I really have to take it all the way to zero to kind of get to what I liked about it. So instead, I can try a different blending mode because what I really love is kind of the weird color of this one. You know, this is pretty extreme and it looks nice with a black back, a dark background. But all of us are going to need to print on a white background because our photo printers do not print flat color well and you don't want them to have to do that. To flood all your white space with color. That's just not going to look very good. So instead of normal, I'm going to try color. And so what it's doing is it's bringing the colors in from, from that action, but it's using the exposure levels of my original. So you see it's pushing everything a little bit more green, which I thought I didn't want, but it's kind of interesting. And it's really pushing the reds. And it's pushing the, the reds to such an extreme in some shots that it, it kind of flattens them out. And so now I'll take the opacity down and decide how much of that I actually want of that color. And I can even, I don't usually do this, but because it's the reds that are so weird, I can even erase away chunks of it <laughs> subtly. It's only a few areas where I don't think it's very effective. And that's perfectly safe to do. So to show you what I did, I basically erased away from that in certain spots. but I'm putting it on a color overlay, color blending mode. So when my exposures are behind it, it just adjusts them very slightly. I'll erase it here too. So I want the red in the robot, but not in that, that wood background. Okay. So that's one. Let's try this one now. They're all kind of doing the same thing, but I like the blues in here, but look the crazy reds. So I'm going to take this layer, select all, copy, paste on top, go to my, my base layer with the empty background, because remember the white's on a layer behind. Select that empty space, carry it to the top, delete. and then play with opacity and how much of it do I want. I think I want about that much. So it's just giving a little bit more dimension to my color. Now this is pretty much doing the same thing again. It's another cross-processing, so I don't think I need this one. Instead, let me, let me go for this crazy one. So 
we're doing pretty big creative jumps here. These mis-etiquette actions are free online, available for anyone to use, made available by the artist, but they are extreme. They're really strong processing. But every once in a while, they just work for a photo. They push it in a way you didn't expect. So again, how do I get that background out? I go to my original merged layer. Whoop. I want to make sure contiguous is turned on there. You want to make sure you're on the the right layer. <laughs> okay, and now take that selection up and then just delete. Turn the white back on. It's really dark, right? So really, any of it is a little too dark. So let's try a different blending mode. Let's try only the lights. Oh, you see, that does something really nice. It brings kind of that purple and counters some of that, that green a little bit. Just bringing the lights in from it. It's very subtle, but it's going to help a lot because that green's a little overpowering even though it's dynamic. And if I want a little bit more of it to show, I can do an adjustment levels and I can just up the highlights a little bit. Not that much. Maybe 0.05. Cool. All right, I like this. That looks cool. And I guess just for for consistency's sake, I'll take the max texture one, put it at the very top, see if it helps with anything. And I'll do it as a, a pin light filler. So it really only shows the textural differences. And where I should help is with my three layers of depth, you know, blurry, in focus, blurry, it brings a little bit of sharpness into that middle ground. It's very subtle, but that's with it, that's without it. That high pass brings just a little bit of focus. Maybe take it down a tiny bit. All right, I think that is it for me, but I don't save this as a Photoshop file because this is my processing. So I save this as a TIFF file. Right, just like with our panoramics, just like with our photocubist projects with LZW turned on. Now to make it print ready. Okay, so I finished it, but now let me check the image size. So it's a resolution of 300, just because that's how my camera takes its pictures, and I kept my, my camera frames at their native format and native resolution, and I only shrunk some one of them. But the width is way bigger than an 11 by 14 window, right? So I'm going to uncheck resample. And if I put the resolution at our preferred lab resolution, which is 350, let's see what the size is. So 21 by 16. Okay, and now I realize I have enough resolution. It's only going to get better if I shrink it. What happens if I make the width 14? Ah, you see, so it's 14 by a little bit less than 11. And the resolution is 500, which is big, but not ridiculous. So I say OK. And now I'm going to go to Image Canvas Size. And I'm going to go ahead and make the height 11. And you see how it grows a little bit on each side. Then I go to my background white layer, I fill it in again with white, just so I can see it, even though it would print that way anyway. And this would be my composition within an 11 by 14 window at 350, or at least 350 resolution. So I say OK. Now I save it again, file save. This is my project at full resolution within the, the composition that I will print and fit into a mat. And then I will save it as a JPEG to upload.
Come on. But this one's a little complicated to submit. Because I also want to see your three to five raw exposures, right? And that was before I made my corrections here. So my three to five raw exposures they are in this folder the best exposures folder so these will also get uploaded so each of you is going to have quite a few things to upload so first your sketch and let me go ahead and clean up my sketch a little bit just crop it so it's nicely visible you can just take a photo of your sketchbook, like I did here. I know usually I sketch on the computer, but I was doing this in my office. Let me see, I'll do auto tone. There we go, kind of bring it out a little bit, okay? Save that as a JPEG. This is my Carl Assignment 7 sketch to the desktop. That's first, then my exposures in order, my best raw exposures, and then my finished and arranged project. So all five of those are going to get uploaded to PhotoBucket. So using Firefox as my browser. These are not due for you until next class. You look at the critique date in the um, course outline. Go to my library. You'll find them under photo assignments and assignment seven, three layers of depth. So I'm gonna upload mine to instructor documents. You'll just upload it right to the folder or instructor demonstrations. So I'm gonna take all five of these, put them here. I'll show you the naming convention. And because I was using robots and toys, I was able to push the processing a little bit more with this demo. So the first, your sketch, you're going to name with the one. Your first raw exposure will be Carl 2, or your name in 2. Remember to title them. Your second raw exposure will be your name and three. Your third raw exposure will be your name and four. And then if you have more than three exposures for your project, you just keep going. And then here, my final processed image, my name and five. All right, so the next demo or the next thing I'll show you is what if I wanted to do something different with these exposures? What if I needed to add uh, blurriness to them, a focus pull to them? So let me make a duplicate. So there's a few ways, right? I could, if I needed more out of focus in this background, I could select the background Do it really loosely. Command J to duplicate it on its own and then blur it using filter Gaussian blur. That's a really strong, fast way 